This is a reading from the Notebooks by Maria Valtorta, 1945 to 1950, November 15th, 1945, for Emma F. Footnote 112. See Note 4 and Notes 312 and 472 in the Notebooks, 1944. Impatience is never a factor contributing to success. When the time comes, the souls will appear by God's will. Obedience is always proof of justice and spirituality, and it is always rewarded. Fears about the future display imperfection in the three theological virtues. God can raise up anywhere, and especially in the most unexpected places, and beings. What is necessary for a child of his who entrusts himself or herself to him. What often seems to be the best help is, on the contrary, a detour from God's path, and God then removes it, busying and concerning himself with providing the element needed to replace it. Whoever seizes upon many recommendations ends up perishing in a tangle of tentacles. It is not enough to say his will, but one must do it after it has been expressed. Footnote 113. We pass over the next textbook, the next notebook, number 67, containing 12 episodes from the third year of the public life, November 17th to 28th, 1945, as well as slightly over 50 pages from the following one, containing four episodes from the third year, November 29th to December the 2nd, 1945. December the 2nd, 1945. From EF, sorry, for EF, uh, footnote 114, the person mentioned in note 112. From Jeremiah Chapter 31, verses 21 and 22. The Lord says, To have severe words, where one would like to have only love, is a painful thing. But I said, It is love not to allow deviations to occur in justice. Listen then. When humanity turns you into castaways, external humanity, meaning that of your neighbor, or internal humanity, humanity meaning your own, to come back to the surface, to the, sh to sh to the shore, to salvation, there is no alternative but to get out of the treacherous, raging sea in the grasp of contrary winds. How? By isolating oneself. Isolation provides a way to understand God and discern good and evil. In isolation, one can separate what is good from what is not good. In short, it means working and working on oneself. Dissipation is never good. It is always disorder. Disorder never has God with it. How can you isolate yourself? The way the sailor does in times of heavy storms, that is, in a peaceful bay. Is it off the course you charted? It does not matter. Anyhow, it has not been established that the course you charted was good. You said it was, and you followed it, not looking at the compass, but your own inclination, in such fashion that you left port in bad condition from the very start and were set back on course by more than one pilot. And you were going farther and farther off course, wanting to follow your crazy needle. Separate yourself from the world and from the voices of the world to listen to God. What value have you attached to the advice of those speaking in my name? Don't you know that God is on the lips of his servants? And what value did you give to what was handed to you in my name? One, two, three, a thousand advisors. Babel, one, two, three acts of disobedience, rebellion. It is useless to call for help if afterwards one does not listen to the voice. Go back then to the first advice. Reflect and provide a remedy if you can, but you cannot any longer because it is too late and you are ruining yourself. You go wandering about looking for comfort, but, but if they are not of the sort your will desires, you leave them aside, and so... Why do you disobey me? What advice did Father Migliorini give you from the outset? You don't even remember anymore, and you make him uneasy, and yourself uneasy, to no end. What is found in my words? Are you unable to read them? As long as you fail to read the signs and make more mistakes, even when I supply providential remedies for the foolish sending of letters, almost as if seeking vocations is like seeking merchandise, you proceed. But my words... My words, isolate yourself, cut off relations, don't deceive yourself. 
Impose silence concerning yourself, around yourself, in yourself. Let the wind fall, and then, humbled and subject, obedient and patient, start all over again by other roots. Do you want to be a victim? Break yourself. Obedience lasts even after the dissolution of vows. Obedience to me. If the work were to fail definitively, my heart, yours, and that of others would suffer therefrom, but your soul would benefit if you are able to turn this torture into sanctification. Bend your soul. Bend it. It will sprout stronger wings. You have freedom to know how to use it. Manage to be patient so as to be able to conclude, and heroic to be able to humble yourself. If need be, you shall purify yourself in another order, or even, and if it is not a life less pleasing to God, and it is not a life less pleasing to God in the secrecy of a house in the world, may the light be with you, confused soul. Footnote 115. We pass over about 1,300 pages containing two episodes from the third year of the public life, December the 3rd and 4th of 1945. December the 4th, 1945. St. Martina. It is 8 p.m. I am invaded by a supernatural joy which is so intense that it already tastes like ecstasy. I don't know what it comes from because there is no reason. I am weary, filled with pain, and dazed because I've had to speak a lot and also listen to things which are anything but a cause for joy, the ruin of spirits. Just imagine how I suffered, and yet this very intense joy comes, very intense. And then a place with stonework appears to me, thick, dark, thick dark walls, damp, I think the color of very light coffee or very dark mud. The place is like a rotunda from which corridors extend out in this shape. She's got a, an X drawn over a circle. I say corridors because the sky is not visible. There is a dark, high ceiling, like the walls and big square stones, like the ones at Tullianum. Footnote 116. See the entry for February 29th in the notebooks, 1944. Right at the center of the rotunda, a child appears to me, not much older than a little girl. She must be twelve years old at most, and her body is even less developed than St. Agnes's. Footnote 117. See the entries for January 13th and January 20th in the notebooks 1944, from whom she also differs because in addition to being smaller, her hair is brown and her skin is a brownish white. She has two big, very sweet black eyes, a bit sad, as if tired, as if they have suffered a lot, or belong to one who has suffered very much. Her robe is completely white, made of linen, very loose, without a belt, elbow-length sleeves from which two very shapely forearms emerge, ending in two little brownish hands crossed over her chest. The figure is luminous, but not excessively. It is not the radiant figure of a saint. It is a humble apparition, and yet it is luminous, with starlight with, within a light veil of mist. But it attracts me because it is light, with a pure softness, bestowing peace and joy. The contrast of the dark walls is very sharp. She looks at me and smiles. Behind her back, along the two sides of the... Here's the picture. Which I have marked with the hyphen. Some men in short yellow-gray robes are running off. Four are heading north towards a barely visible, far-off light, as if the high corridor ended in an open place. The others are heading south, in a deeper darkness, to the point where I cannot tell exactly how many there are. I understand, however, that the girl is a martyr, for she is clasping a small palm to her breast, in her folded arms a white palm, I dare to say spiritualized, as is the linen of the tunic, which is more immaterial and magnificent than even the most beautiful linen. But I do not know who she is, and ask, Who are you? She answers, Martina, and this is the place where I suffered greatly, one of the places, for I have suffered greatly, so many martyrdoms before the sword, and those who are fleeing are the ones who tormented me. The ones heading towards the light 
are those I saved with my pain and baptized with my blood. The others are those who did not want to convert to Jesus. But now I am happy. There is no more pain. To come to glory, one must suffer everything. Remember, I am Martina, and I am also particularly called upon in the invocations of the church. Oh, for Jesus is good, and for a little pain he grants so much joy and so much power. Goodbye, I am your friend. You do not remember me, and yet you knew me and loved me when you were, my, were a girl my age. I have always loved you, though, together with Agnes. <clears throat> May the light of paradise always shine in you and help you to bear the light to so many souls. Goodbye. Receive this. I will sprinkle, sprinkle you with my balms. And she shakes the palm towards me and then folds her arms over her chest again and disappears from my sight with a soft, immaterial, unrepeatable song. And everything sparkles in the dismal place while she goes off, leaving as a memento only a tremendous, indescribable fragrance. I take up the missal. Four lines on St. Martina for January 30th. I look at an old prayer book. She's not even mentioned. I search through my memory. Nothing. Complete historical darkness. There remain, though, her friendship, her gaze, her smile, and the scent of her balms, and the previous joy lasts and takes me high up, very high up. Footnote 118. We pass over the remaining 26 pages. Handwritten pages containing two episodes from the third year of the public life, December 5 and 6th of 1945, and about 22 pages from the next notebook containing the episode entitled The Bread of Heaven. December the 7th, 1945. Jesus says, This language is too hard. He wants to make us victims of his madness. Men still say when I exhort them to live justly and instruct them on how religion should be understood and practiced to make it a way of life yielding eternal life. And they do not realize that in so saying, they confess to being degraded below their condition as men. They speak of evolution, of a superman. Well then, let us consider man as I found him, brought to this point after his descent from paradise. Draw the diagram as I guide your hand. Footnote 119. The writer here adds in parentheses, I turn the page because the diagram is not there. And on the next two pages of the no notebook, the drawing is made. And when the diagram is finished, you will see that there is not an advance, but a decline. Evolution. When today's proud and false philosophers speak of evolution, they presuppose the, con the concept of ascent. But to evolve means to proceed from one point to another, and then one can proceed by spirals either upwards or downwards. Can't you make a spiral? Make a parabola. Do you see? If he had moved on the right side, he would have evolved towards heaven. He wanted the left side. That's the current Superman, today's evolved one, who thinks it is madness to live at least as a man if he is unable to become an angel. And he calls himself a victim because I exhort him to live as a man. And he calls me mad. Yes, quite mad because of love. Love me. Love me, little John. Footnote 120. We pass over 110 handwritten pages containing eight episodes from the third year of the public life. It's hard to read what she wrote here, but this is what it looks like. I can't read it, and I'm wearing glasses and holding it close, so I doubt you'll be able to get discern anything from that. And then there's the parabola. December the 18th, 1945. Jesus says, Thirteen years ago I sealed you under the weight of infirmity, breaking your word and activity. You had to save for years through pain. When I made you a fountain to save through the word, I made you a spokesman. Today, my hidden violet, I authorize you to make use of the things you have heard and seen with prudence, without avarice, with holiness, and for a holy end. It was my clear and firm desire that no one could draw from the reservoir into which my word is poured through you unless it was first completely filled. But since there was a wish to draw from it drop by drop, and in reality 
I did not like this very much because it is imprudent and diminishes the work. It is foolish to suffocate every breath of the original fount when the water it gives forth is not gathered afterwards into tanks to be used at the proper time and with adequate precaution and protection so that it will not be contaminated by foreign elements or appropriated or anything else. But it is subdivided and scattered into a thousand streams, losing its imposing beauty, being dispersed into the profane aridity of a more or less rationalistic and incredulous desert, and in addition being used for the maneuvers of mocking, hostile spirits. Therefore, little John, when you see that my word can become balm and salvation, give my word. Do not be afraid. You will clearly see who it is good to give it to. The light illuminates you. And pray very, very much for the priests who will go up to the altar for the first time during these feast days. May theirs be a true Christmas, a birth to Christ, with Christ, and for Christ. There is need for this. Having holy priests will not keep you from having wars and massacres, but it will at least prevent your, but it will at least prevent you all dying like beasts as you are starting to do. I should, oh, I really should, repeat the act of driving the profaners out of the temple. I am deeply disgusted. Violet of the cross, pray for the ministers of your Jesus. Go in peace, soul of mine, my crucified one, my voice, my daughter, my joy. And he clasps my face with his long hands, bending so low over me that his hair brushes against my forehead and his breath is upon my face. December the 19th, 1945, 11.30 p.m. Jesus says, Here I am to explain many things. I am not fond of questions, especially from you. You are intelligent enough to understand the responses I give you through the dictations contained in the visions. But here, now that things have turned out as they should, without influencing anyone in any way, I shall speak and explain. Your questions, the ones... I deem proper to take up are 1. Why is there so much difference between Dora's footnote 121 this refers to Dora Barsotelli who said she was favored by manifestations concerning whose origins the writer harbored apprehension and doubt as we shall see in the course of the present volume and as can be noted in other writings separate from the notebooks why is there so much difference between Dora's manifestations and yours 2. Why in the world are these cases becoming so frequent? 3. Could what for the time being has not been seen happen in the future, that is, an accusation against my phenomena? 4. Will Dora remain in her current state? 5. Why do you feel spiritually detached in this regard, though admitting the supernatural is being manifested in her? 6. Should you keep the card received through an angelic dictation? 7. Is it appropriate for Dora to know you and your work? 8. Why did you wish to see her at the outset and afterwards fail to have this desire any more? 9. Why does the devil torture her in this way? The other questions are childish, and I shall pass over them. Now then, you must know that I adapt manifestations to the environment and purpose for which I have inspired them. You receive the mission to become a worldwide voice. You must sing the hymn of mercy and love, wisdom and perfection, for all ears and all hearts, all intelligence and and all souls. Therefore, after having prepared you for this capacity, and do not grow proud, for everything you have been, you have has been given you by me for this mission, including illness and being alone, everything. I made you a complete voice, a giant, you that are a pygmy, but it's not you, it's me in you. I am the giant. Then my little Christopher, who bears Christ, but are born by him, Dora is destined to bring God to be loved by simple folk who are not even able to say the Our Father and are ignorant of the most elementary notions concerning religion. If she were to speak as I speak to you, I could do so. Who would understand her? There are pages which make the learned pensive in what I have said to you. Could they be understood by the simple for whom I made you my instrument? Do you see how good and just and just God is and how humble he is? He annihilates himself adapting to the instrument and those listening. He bears with gestures of familiarity, which he would not endure from you, for you know how to behave, 
and in you they would be a lack of respect, whereas in Dora they are just instances of naivete, and they make me laugh because I seem to be hearing the good-natured Galileans who spoke to me as common people. Not all can be Janes of Cusa, don't you think? I shall reply to the second question as follows. Providence acts benevolently towards its creatures. General corruption existing before the war and ever on the increase, the laxity of the clergy, the tremendous war, the pernicious doctrines, the pride of the experts, or those who think they are, have diminished faith to such a point that it would end up dying of consumption, and it is painful to say so. The agent most doing most damage to their faith is the clergy, on whose faults I have dictated to you many times. Consequently, as on a moonless night, the stars light up in greater numbers, and even the smallest ones are visible, and all of them serve to provide a minimum of light to guide night travelers. In the society of Catholics who lack greater lights, that is, an active clergy, stars and starlets, the last time will be the time of the Spirit, and these lights, these voices will teem to provide guidance for the upright of heart, groping in the haze of the forms of materialism, rationalism, and sectarianism, in which priests will take an active part. And God will always be known to his children with his true vitality, not with the cold, automatic mechanism offered by those who no longer believe, though they cry out, Faith! Faith! Because that is their profession. Oh, what are the ones who cry out that way? Hired mourners or paid barkers. Men and women who, once their work is done, go off, not at all convinced about the worth of what they have exalted or saddened by the pain they have wept over. In truth, in truth, I tell you that a little voice, even if it makes some grammatical mistakes, but speaks words coming from God, will have more power than the utilitarian and unconvinced action of too great a part of the clergy. For this reason, I go and inspire my voices here and there, and I will always do so, even if I am combated through them. And the more I see my flock at the mercy of idle, idle shepherds, the more I will do so. To the third question I reply, certainly it could happen, and the devil will do everything possible to make it happen. I therefore ask you to provide a great deal of assistance to your sister in this mission, who because of her very ignorance, and also because she is less prepared than you, a little warrior who gave fought, who have fought since adult adolescence, and even before the temp with temptation, out of love for me, a little eagle with a solid beak, who has endured bites and lost feathers, but you are healed of the satanic wounds, flying higher and higher over purer and purer peaks, so as to be cauterized and medicated by me. The sun, the sun, she, on account of all of this, is less sensitive than you in feeling and distinguishing and in reacting, and could be subjected to a craftier assault than the others by the evil one who tries to destroy you and her, but you much more than her for your range of action is vaster than Dora's and more powerful, and I state here that it would be necessary for Dora to be nourished very frequently with the Eucharistic bread. If Satan does not want this, I do. Confession, too, will help her, but only because it will give her peace in the scruples which the enemy will infuse into her heart. It can thus be less frequent, but let the Eucharist be her strength. And here is the fourth question. And I answer, souls are never static. They oscillate from the depths to the heights, and vice versa. They sometimes plunge. When pride or deceit or lust enters, driving me away from the soul, or they shoot towards heaven when they immolate themselves according to my example. But these are special cases. In the mass, ups and downs are observed. A soul, when taken to a certain level, can descend or ascend. It does not remain at that level. Dora is at a level which is very susceptible of change. She could be perfected. She could be ruined. Pray a lot. Let Father watch carefully over humility, over her humility and sincerity. The devil will try to bring ruin in these two areas. 5. You could state the entire sentence, and it would be like this. Why am I almost afraid of her? And you are afraid. This is a sign that you are not in the grace of God. Come on. You are a girl sticking her head under the covers in order not to see the dark. 
But isn't darkness thicker under the covers? What are you afraid of? Of what you are? Dora is not like you. Poor Dora. She is the most innocuous being on earth. But Mary, my mother, was dismayed over the angel, and she was full of grace. What a mystery. For some, this fear felt by my mother, and yet it is easy to understand. She was the humble one, the hidden one, the consecrated one, the virgin. The secret is in these four words, and you are the violet of the cross, the hidden one, the consecrated one. That is why you do not desire social contacts and tremble at being known. That seems to you like being left naked. Do not fear. The veils over your mystical love shall not be lifted. Be at peace. Be at peace. Do not tremble with suffering. O oh, my violet, sister, and spouse, I alone know you, and let it be known that my permission goes as far as I want. The other one knows and speaks as long as he can. Do you remember Punturieri? Footnote 122. See the notebooks, 1944. Note 788. Well then, of what use was he to bring Giuseppe here and give him to me? Do you see? The sixth question. Yes, keep that little page with your secret papers. Nothing else is necessary. Seventh question. No, it is not at all necessary. The stars follow their way even if they do not know or meet each other. Indeed, it's a disaster if two stars meet in the sky. The two of you have different missions tending towards a single aim. You will meet in the aim, in me. It is likewise useless, indeed. It is really not useful for the directly instructed woman to receive other instructions which would mean only exertion for her limited cultural background and superficial enjoyment. It is like this, at least for the time being. The environment is not suitable, either for keeping dictations. I will never recommend sufficient moderation and prudence in distributing the notebooks. Since people are slow to seek protection for them, let them be very slow in giving them to one person or another. Eighth question. Why I carried out this action in you? The reason? It is not necessary for me to explain them, because it was right to do so, and you, also through my action in you, intuited this after having reflected in vain until the light came. It would be harmful for you, harmful for you to know one another, because both you and she have dealings with a rationalistic world. Do you know what the world would say? See how they exalt each other? This smacks of the Middle Ages, and they would call to mind the Paterinis and their like, and the, and the Piagnosis and their likes, until finishing with the great name of psychiatry. Until finishing with the great names in psychiatry. Forget about it. Forget about it. Let every fount yield its own flow without fussing. Similarly, it is also good for your work not to influence or seem to influence hers. Do you have the abundance of the word? Does she make her voice heard? Very good. Let each remain with what is characteristic of her. Ninth question. She is tortured materially because he could not torture her as he tortures you with a more refined psyche. He is subtle and intelligent with you and goads you in your psychic self. She, a poor creature, would not understand the problems he waves in front of you to bring you doubts and fears, and he thus takes her by the hair and slams her. Well then, pray for her, who will have so much to suffer. So very much, poor Dora. Support her. She is a sister. May she not be lost. May having been called not be harmful to her. You see that Satan was able to inject his venom into the disciples. Pray that this will not happen here. She is in a great test and at a turning point. Show Father all of this, but it is a lesson for you and for him, and for no other. Let no one disobey. I do not want them to. And now rest, with your body weary, with your soul at peace. Be at peace. I bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And it is 1.20 a.m. on December the 20th. I am happy, though, to have received this dictation, and so soon I thank my Lord for it.